Here are two important terms, accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close a measurement is to the actual true value. If you guess someone's age and you're off by five years saying they're younger, you might be polite, but you're not very accurate. I think it's fairly accurate to say that the concept of accuracy is fairly straightforward. The idea of precision, however, is a bit more involved. Precision is how close measured values are to each other. You can be precise while not accurate, as shown by this archer. A precise instrument yields consistent results within a narrow range. The greater the precision, the narrower that range. You might say all the data points are closer together. Let's look at one of the simplest instruments, the ruler. Let's use this ruler to measure this line. What do you think? Would you say about mm, 7.4398273 centimeters? Hmm? Wait, wait. No, maybe it's 7.4398274 centimeters. What's wrong? With this ruler, you're just randomly guessing those latter digits. Your measurement can only be as good as your instrument allows. With this ruler, we can be pretty sure the length is 7 centimeters. Uh, you can even make a reasonable guess of 7.4 centimeters. Beyond that, however, the numbers are meaningless. They're, as we say, insignificant. Hey, how about this ruler? Let's zoom in. Wow, that's some ruler. <laughs> Probably much more expensive to build. But with this special ruler, we can reasonably measure to the hundredths place. Ah, so we see the line is 7.46 centimeters long. What's the difference between 7.4 and 7.46? The answer is precision. The 7.46 is more precise. The expensive ruler allows for greater precision. Precision will cost you. Generally speaking, the greater the precision of your instrument, the greater the care that went into building it, and thus the higher the price tag. Sometimes great precision is important. Spend the money. Other times high precision is a waste of money. It's not needed. Use your money otherwise. Using this special ruler, do you see that all these three digits have real meaning? We're really confident about these first two digits. Now, this third digit is a bit of an estimate, but a reasonable one. All these digits together we say are significant. We call them significant figures. They have meaning in the physical world. Which ruler can give you more significant figures? This one, the one that is more precise. It's also the one that's more expensive. There are some important rules for how we add, subtract, multiply, and divide numbers with significant figures. Briefly, you can never end up with more significant figures than you started with. If I add 1.372 grams of sugar to 1 gram of water, what's the total mass of the mixture? Is it 2.372 grams? Nope. The moment you add 1 gram of water to 1.372 grams of sugar is the moment you lose your precision of four significant figures. Think of it this way. What's 2 plus I don't know? <laughs> it's I don't know. What's 7 plus I don't know? It's also, I don't know. What's three plus I don't know? It's, I don't know. What's one plus one? Well, that's two. We use math and chemistry, but we also deal with the real world. Where else will you find that 1.372 plus one equals two? <laughs> Ain't that beautiful? I won't go into all the rules for working with sig figs. You can get that elsewhere. I just want to make sure you know what they're all about. Oh, recall we can express numbers in scientific notation? Here's the deal. All the numerals shown in the coefficient are, by definition, significant. They better be. If they're not, don't include them. Consider 1.71 times 10 to the minus 2 grams of calcium. Here are three significant figures. 
right in the coefficient. If you had a more expensive instrument, you might have a number like 1.7134 times 10 to the minus 2 grams. But maybe you don't care for so much precision. It depends on your situation. Okay, let's put all these concepts to use. Let me just write out and tell you that in one breath, there are about 2 times 10 to the 22 air molecules. This is mostly nitrogen and oxygen molecules, but here's my question. How many carbon monoxide molecules are in that breath? Recall the concentration of carbon monoxide in air is about 0.00002%, or 0.2 ppm. Okay, x CO molecules divided by 2 times 10 to the 22nd air molecules times 100 equals 0.00002%. Okay, solve for x. Excellent. X equals 4 times 10 to the 15th carbon monoxide molecules. Notice that everything has one significant figure. So our answer had also better only have one significant figure, and here it is, 4 times 10 to the 15th. Notice you can't write like this, 4.00 times 10 to the 15th. No, no. Why not? Because we don't have that precision. Let's write it out in decimal notation. Four zero 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 lots of zeros. That would be four quadrillion carbon monoxide molecules. Four quadrillion. Take a breath. You just inhaled four quadrillion carbon monoxide molecules. Sounds scary. Do you think it might be wise to get rid of all the carbon monoxide molecules from the air you breathe? Do you think that would be practical? Do you see how someone less than honest might make use of this as a scare tactic? The deal is this. Molecules are so, so small that even when you don't have that many, the absolute number that you have is actually quite large. But this absolute number of carbon monoxide molecules here, four quadrillion, it's pale in comparison to the many, many billions of more other gaseous molecules present. Yeah, when it comes to atoms and molecules, four quadrillion is next to nothing. Wow. That's a wild perspective. That's the world of atoms and molecules. That's chemistry. Good chemistry to you. 